Well, hello again. Here we are for another wonderful and exciting session on the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah that no man can manipulate. I'm standing here before you on the pagan day of Tuesday, September 5th, 2017. Tomorrow morning at sunrise, the full moon will greet the sun as the sun rises in the east, and the full moon will be above the horizon greeting the sun, announcing new moon day. I'm standing here before you at a dark sky preserve uh, in Ontario uh, called the Terence Barrens Sky Preserve. The wonderful thing about the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah is it has many witnesses that confirm that the new moon is full moon. Why? In 1 Shemuel chapter 20, David knew days in advance when new moon would be. How did he know that? Well, behind me, the full moon, as new moon, will only reveal itself at sunset above the horizon every night except the night before new moon day. So at sunset, the moon will just be below the horizon. Tomorrow morning, the full moon will be above the horizon. Every other day at sunrise, it won't be. So these two indicators of degrees above the horizon are extremely telling in regards to consistency and astronomical perfection. As well, the full moon rises in the east, and for one night out of every month, it is closest to true north from a 90 degree standpoint. Tomorrow morning, it'll be closest to the 270 degree mark uh, to true north. So with this said, how do I know it's the first day of the sixth month tomorrow morning at sunrise? Well, the stars. And if you read Job or Eob, much information is provided in regards to the stars, allowing us to know what season it actually is. So a month from now, it'll be the first day of the seventh month announcing trumpets, when to blow the ram's horn. So this video is dedicated in preparation of trumpets that is soon upon us. We hope you enjoy it. Welcome to another scriptural study. In this scriptural study, we will be exploring the book of Tehillim or Psalms, chapter 81, verse 3, and associated scriptural verses in reference to blowing the ram's horn at the time of the new moon. But which one? Is it the full moon? Crescent moon? or conjunction moon. Please ensure your computer monitor is on full screen. And to stop the video when needed to review the scriptural subject matter in greater detail. The scripture reveals that Yahuwah and his celestial clock and calendar operates with the sun, moon, with the stars and that this is the way to number our days. Because the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah is not solar and or a lunar system only. So, with the objective approach, let's prove all things to determine truth and explore how the sun, moon, with the stars, identify the first day of the seventh month. These five steps of scriptural, etymological, archaeological, historical, and empirical scientific astronomical witnesses and or evidence will prove the question at hand. We will also touch upon why world religions are subjective in their approach with this scriptural subject matter, with feelings, emotions, and aesthetics, and why this must stop. So, what is the scriptural evidence? So yes, we are to blow the shofar in the seventh month on the first day, as it is designed as a rest day, a remembrance of blowing trumpets and 
a set-apart gathering. You would think this scriptural passage would resolve the question immediately, but truth be known, and regrettably, it is debated vehemently. Even though the majority of all scriptural translations are consistent that the full moon is the new moon that commences the first day of the seventh month. And then there are those that are still imprisoned in world religions that even scoff at writings such as to Hanok or Enoch. Even when the details are 100% accurate astronomically in creation as to how the solar and lunar years equate to their consistent cycles in days, let alone where and how these celestial lights rise and set. And these writings verify themselves, let alone confirm what happens in creation year after year. And to think that in the book of Bereshith, or Genesis, Enoch lived for 365 years. Coincidence? But, after all, didn't Enoch walk with the almighty Yahuwah? Is it not true that Enoch was instructed to observe all matters that take place in the Shamaim, which is the heavens? But really, how many people in the world today actually observe the work of Yahuwah's hands in the Shemaim. The fact is, the majority of people are totally unaware of the importance Scripture places on the lights in the Shemaim with the sun, moon, with the stars. Because how many are aware that our Father in Heaven is known as the Father of Lights? And even more important, why? How many are actually aware that the heavens are proclaiming the esteem of the Almighty One and that His lights reveal knowledge? How many are aware that each of these lights have a purpose? Scripture reveals that the sun is known as the greater light because it is never dark like a conjunction moon, nor does it have a shadow like a crescent moon. Hanok or Enoch confirms this in his writings. And of course, Yeshayahu or Isaiah verifies this too. And it is why the math they share reveals the full moon is new moon both with the details of size and illumination. And it is why Enoch knew that the first day of every month was when the full moon rises in the east, shines through the whole night, sets in the west, but not before it greets and is seen over the sun the next morning, announcing New Moon Day. And Enoch mentions this more than once just as Yashayahu or Isaiah confirmed. And it is why we can physically observe this or shamar it in creation. Yes, we all can observe what happens in the heavens, can't we? And this is why we all can observe the Sabbath timely and why it is a sign. Even the writings from the Apocrypha verify this as well don't they? Because they spoke about the full moon and how the full moon stands at its proper time and as well is a notification of times, a luminous body that wanes when it completes its course. Only a full moon does this and why we blow the ram's horn during the full moon. Scripture interprets itself let alone verifies what creation actually does. Yes, the full moon, the lesser light, indeed rises in the east and shines to the west. So also shall the coming of the son of Adam be. Hallelujah 
from new moon to new moon and from Sabbath to Sabbath, all shall come to worship Yahuwah and his way. Regrettably, though, world religions have invested much time and effort to get you to ignore scripture, let alone what creation does. Even though not one scriptural verse shares that a watchman on a wall was ever tasked and or assigned to identify the first visible crescent, let alone a conjunction moon phase. And worse yet, the three scriptural verses that speak about a crescent moon provide evidence that a crescent moon was associated with whoring and death. What about the etymological evidence? Does it support full moon, crescent, and are the conjunction phase as new moon? Remember, the first day of the seventh month is a day of rest. Etymologically, days of rest were to be guarded, which originally meant to be observed, which was originally known as shamar in Hebrew, which meant to attend to, to be circumspect, take heed, to mark, to look, to regard, wait, and watch. All of which can be done with those that have ears to hear and eyes to see. Because, etymologically, a new moon signifies a new month. As it is new, fresh, a new thing. Yes, it is something that has been rebuilt, renewed, and repaired. And any child of light can differentiate which is old as compared to what is renewed and are fully repaired, right? Identifying what is renewed is easy, isn't it? And etymologically, Scripture utilizes the word renewed accurately, as it is wonderful to be renewed, rebuilt, and repaired in full. And isn't it true scripturally that he who overcomes shall be dressed in white robes? Is it coincidence then that the gates in heaven are like pearls, like a full moon? Is it coincidence as well that the East Gate was opened on new moon days and Sabbaths? Which leads us to the archaeological evidence. Is it coincidence then that scripturally the East Gate is where we are led to? Let alone that the esteem of the Almighty One of Israel came from the way of the East. Didn't Enoch share as well the importance of the eastern gates? Yes, learn the archaeology of the temple walls in the book of Nehemiah and why it was built in this manner. And thus why the golden gate is the eastern gate adjacent to the Garden of Gethsemane and the Mount of Olives. Because this is the actual archaeological location where the Messiah Yahushua will touch down when he returns as prophesied in Zechariah chapter 14, verse 4, etc. Yes, indeed, as lightning comes from the east and shines to the west, so also shall the coming of the son of Adam be. Yes, the pattern is obvious and consistent, isn't it? Yes, a pattern that is established forever, and why this witness in the heavens is steadfast. The archaeological evidence favors the full moon as new moon, just as the scripture, etymology, and archaeology reveals. What about historical evidence? The Jewish historian Flavius Josephus stated that in the first month of the year at the 14th day, the sun would be aligned with Aries. Well, the sun this year once again 
came into alignment with Aries. And as well, the middle star of this Maseroth, known as the Lamb, on the 14th day of the first month, which was on the pagan day of Monday, April 24th, 2017. Because the full moon as new moon for the first day of the first month was 14 days earlier, on the pagan day of Tuesday, April 11th, 2017, at sunrise. Because historically, as Flavius Josephus knew so well on the first day of the first month, the full moon would be aligned with the stars Spica, known originally as the branch, and other stars such as Rijialawa, which was known originally as the foot of the teacher, while the sun would be 180 degrees opposite on the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah. And why, six months later on the first day of the seventh month, the full moon and sun would exactly move 180 degrees on the celestial clock and calendar. Yes, learn celestial navigation. Because what Flavius Josephus shared historically has not changed before and or after his time. Because not only can you navigate with the stars, but we can also tell time by minute and hour every day, 24 hours a day. And to know that this timing piece is more accurate than any timing piece humankind has ever made. Wow. Yes, if you know your history, you will also learn that the stars are also designated for determining seasons. And that the full moon is aligned with this historical annual seasonal pattern. And as such, why we have further historical evidence on when to blow the ram's horn all through time up to and including the present time period. Hallelujah! that the Almighty Yahuwah determined the number of stars and calls them each by name. And why, all through history, these lights have been placed on a lampstand for all to see. What about the empirical, scientific, and astronomical evidence? This branch of science deals with celestial objects and how they can be empirically measured. Again, all three components of the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah work together in perfect harmony to tell time, more specifically, His appointed times. So, as an example, four days before the full moon as new moon, just utilize timeanddate.com to record both sunrise and moonset times. Then go outside and confirm this in creation. This, of course, represents my location. The method can be utilized everywhere on Earth. Then, with programs like mooncalc.org, record the moon and its degrees to the horizon at sunrise and go outside in creation to verify. Notice the moon waxing to full moon and it is below the horizon at sunrise and that it is slowly making its way to the horizon at sunrise each day until finally when new moon day occurs the moon has become full and it greets the sun at sunrise above the horizon announcing new moon day. And, utilizing Stellarium, it allows us a pre-advanced view of what you can observe. You can also empirically measure the percent illumination of the moon each day, as it is being fully renewed. And, understand when the moon is 100% illuminated at its starting and end point, which is just another empirical witness to help determine when New Moon Day actually is. We can also empirically measure the moon and its position in degrees to true north daily. 
Because on New Moon Day, with a full moon, the moon will start the process of setting in the west at sunrise, just like Enoch stated would happen, let alone why it can be observed and verified in creation. The same process can be applied to the PM time period, because look what happens to the moon at sunset and its degrees to the horizon. Each day, as it comes closer and closer to the horizon at sunset, and the night before new moon day, it is below the horizon at sunset, giving us another empirical witness that the next day at sunrise is new moon day, which can be observed and verified out in creation, just like Enoch stated. Empirically proving what moon phase is truly the new moon. And yes, we can empirically measure the moon at sunset each day. And when it becomes 100% fully illuminated, this also provides again further empirical evidence of what day will actually be New Moon Day. And at sunset, we can empirically measure the moon with its position in degrees to true north, can't we? Providing further empirical evidence of when New Moon will be. Just like Enoch stated, if you would like to do this yourself, duplicate this spreadsheet for your location and or respond and we will send you the template. Here is an example for Jerusalem for the first day of the seventh month. It of course shows the same day for New Moon Day as the empirical evidence astronomically works consistently for all locations all over the earth. But this, of course, is how the scriptural system of two, three, or more witnesses works, doesn't it? And why David could know well in advance of when New Moon Day was going to be. Because all he had at his disposal is what we have, and that is the scriptures, which include Enoch, which can be verified and observed in the Shemaim. But when you look at the crescent and conjunction moon phases, extreme errors are observed as none of the empirical measurements match the scriptural, etymological, archaeological, historical, and or empirical evidence as reviewed. But since when do world religions follow an objective approach? They, of course, corral the masses subjectively, don't they? It's why they Photoshop a crescent moon above the East Gate, even though they know this is astronomically impossible. What a disgrace. And it's why some conjunction moon websites state that New Moon Day for the first day of the seventh month Canon will be on different days on Earth. How crazy is that? And just another reason why world religions do not promote the objective approach. Because this does not fit into their money-making timing systems. But as everyone knows, the subjective approach from world religions helps sell non-scriptural doctrine like the rapture let alone other silly nonsense that is sold on t-shirts and coffee mugs. Because the true spiritual harvest cycle is aligned with creation's agricultural harvest cycle. Because this is how scripture was written, wasn't it? And why we can observe it, verify it from earth, and see it in the Shamayim. The Father of Lights, who is known scripturally as the Greater Light, has no darkness in him at all. And why we all must walk in that light. Because the Messiah Yahushua is known as his lamp, or the lesser light in scripture. And his light shines in the darkness 
and the darkness has never overcome it. The times of restoration, renewal, rebuilding is indeed upon us. As we become sons of the light and sons of the day. Because when the kingdom finally arrives, the sunlight and the moonlight will no longer be needed, as the Almighty Yahuwah Himself shall give us all the light we need, as the sun and moon will no longer be. So, for now, let us all blow the ram's horn at the time of the new moon, at the full moon, on our festival day. We continue to pray in the name which is above all names that these scriptural study videos provide value to you and your loved ones. Till next time, Yahuwah willing, all the best in the name which is above all names.